We just had a comment recently and it made us think of this title. Should the 92% stats scare you? One, one, one person was like, they responded to one of my old videos that Dylan, I think his video was like two or three years old. And they said the 92% stat kind of scared them, kind of scared them, right? So should, if you're thinking about getting in the insurance industry, naturally, should 92% failure rate scare you off? That is the most, that I believe it's the toughest industry on planet earth. Should that scare you away? What's unique is it will scare some people away naturally because some people don't want to do anything that's difficult. But I, what I, the kind of, kind of the reason I kind of like it is naturally if someone says like, I want to do something, right? For instance, you know, that, that little two, two minute or a hundred second hanging bar challenge they had at the, uh, at the fair, Dylan, they, they said, uh, if, if someone's like the chances of you completing this task is, is low, like it's difficult. Most people don't make it. Does that not naturally, like it naturally attracts me to doing it. So if someone says the chances of you succeeding at doing this are really low, like telesales, for instance, telesales is very difficult. Most people fail at telesales is even tougher, right? I am attracted to things that are difficult. I'm naturally, like it challenges me. When someone says, dude, you'll probably not be good at this. You'll probably not succeed at this. You'll probably fail. You'll probably hate this. It attracts me. Now I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that you watching or anyone you know or, or, or other people are like that, but naturally when something is difficult, it draws me in. I don't know what, if it's, if it's easy, everyone can do it. You're not, not everyone's making seven, six figures, right? Not everyone's making even seven figures, quarter million dollars. In this industry, there's more millionaires in this industry than any other industry in the world. And that, I think that's why, because it's tough, right? It's difficult. Now, it can be less difficult if you can figure out what your system is and actually be consistent week in and week out. I think that's one of the biggest reasons why insurance agents fail is there's a lack of consistency. It's like a freaking roller coaster. It doesn't have to be. I mean, there's some speakers out there that say success should look like this, right? Well, it's not gonna look like that either. You know, it's not like, oh, it's just amazing. It's just upward, upward climb of success, right? It's always gonna be a roller coaster. We have roller coasters here every single day, right? But we stay consistent and we don't give up. Most, I mean, biggest reason people fail at, at stuff in general in life is they quit. If you don't quit, you never actually fail. Yeah, you're not reaching the goals you want to achieve because it's difficult, that's fine. But if you quit along the way, then you have 0% chance of succeeding because you quit, AKA you failed, right? So as long as you don't quit and you keep growing, like I know, I know insurance agents, a lot of insurance agents that have been doing this 30 years, 25 years, 40 years and they're not even any they're not even that good at it. They don't even work that hard. They never work that hard. But they're sitting on six figures of renewals because they just didn't quit. Right? And I'm not saying that's that's my personality. I'm not saying that's what you want to do. I'm not saying that's what I want to do. I don't want to just be okay at something and and just be not a quitter and then oh by the way, 20 years later I'm successful. Like that's just not my definition of success. My definition of success is how difficult is it? How quick can I get there? And what do I need to do to freaking get there, right? Like going above and beyond and doing more. So should it scare you? I really don't think it should. I think if anything, it should freaking challenge you and let you know that not everyone's gonna make it. Okay, like everyone can, I love Taco Bell. Everybody can, everybody can succeed working at Taco Bell, right? You know, can you, you know, how can I help you? What would you like to eat today, right? Hey, my name's Cody, welcome to Taco Bell, what can I get you? Right, I, I love Taco Bell, okay? A bean burrito, excellent bean burrito. What else, what else can I get you? Would you like, you know, would you like a cinnamon twist with that? Would you like, you know, a medium or a large drink? Excellent, you're at 625, okay, perfect. Would you like to also add our new empanadas? You know, whatever, right? Excellent. C cash or card, how would you like to pay today? Right, it's not complicated. That doesn't attract me to working there. If anyone can do it, and it's really easy and you're going to succeed, but you're going to get paid less because it's not complicated. So that's my, that's, that's what, that's how I think through stuff, right? I think, okay, if, 
everyone succeeds at it, it's probably going to pay less. The tougher it is, the more it should pay. So I don't think it should scare you away because the best industry in the world is difficult. It ain't easy and it ain't easy for a reason because it, it, it rewards people that are successful in it. A lot of people make six figures. A lot of people make 70 grand their first year. A lot of people make 200 grand their first year. A lot of people make $600,000. I know agents that are writing three quarters of a million dollars by themselves without a team. A lot of people make seven figures. Companies make 20, I just visited with a company this week that made 25 million bucks. You ain't doing that working at Taco Bell, right? So I don't think, I mean, if, if you are, if you're not a, if, if you don't have a, the right mindset and, and, and a winner's mentality, then it should scare you away. But if you're a winner, if you thrive and, 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 and work your butt off to be successful, and if you're focused on the outcome, then no, it shouldn't scare you. So yeah, 92% fail, whoop de doo Most people, I mean, nine out of 10 people that we hire are lazy. So maybe you just have to not be lazy and you'll succeed. So at the end of the day, like, yeah, 92% fail. It should not scare you though, because the opportunity is there, the income potential is there, you just got to freaking go for it and want it. So I don't think it should scare you. I think it should attract you. Any questions or comments or? Uh... Yeah. Uh, Caleb Adams said, makes me work even harder. Yeah, I mean, dude, absolutely. freaking lootly It should challenge you, man. And I'm not mic'd up, so you might like. Yeah, okay. So, so, so Dylan said, Caleb Adams, uh, uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas agent, said that uh, it, it motivates him, right? It challenges him. It makes him want to succeed and work harder. And as it should, because it does me too. We do have a question from Omar. Omar has a question. What's the best time to call life insurance clients? What's the best time to call life insurance clients? Good question. I'm going to answer it in two ways. If it's for final expense insurance, then it can be any time. I prefer evenings and weekends. Also can be said that if you're calling for like term life insurance or IULs or people like 40 to 60, then they're probably working. So then you should call them definitely in the evenings and weekends, okay? Final expense, you can get away with the call in the afternoon. Term life insurance for a 49-year-old, you maybe can't get away for calling it. So that's what, that's what you gotta think is, okay, the target market that I'm calling, final expense, they're normally on Social Security. Term, they normally work. So if they normally work, call them outside of work hours. I, I think the best window though, I think the best window is uh, Sunday, late afternoon, early evening, Saturday mornings, evenings. Like I, I just love that. I really do like, like I know, I know agencies that have all their agents come together. They only call on Fridays. They call all day on Fridays. They call for final expense. You can't do that if the person's younger. And then they'll walk out of that dial day, only Fridays with 28 set appointments for every single agent. Seven Monday, seven Tuesday, seven Wednesday, seven Thursday. But you can't do that for term. You know, you can't do that for a younger life insurance clients. Great question, buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson. I'm pretty sure it was a president. Yes, I'm pretty sure that was a, pre uh, yeah. Dylan says it was a president, Lyndon B. Johnson, right? But, he, he's uh, the history buff. He asked, I'm kind of shy using the phone, but I want to help clients and agents alike. He said, I'm kind of shy on the phone, but I want to help agents and clients alike. I'm kind of shy on the phone. I, I think, I think eh, like, Dylan, have you ever had a phone sales job? Would you be a little fearful if I handed you 20 final expense leads and said, hey, set appointments? Yes. And he, he's never had a phone job. And yes, he would be fearful of calling final expense leads, right? Most, I use that example because he's telling the truth. Because most, most people that have, zero, that have little to no phone sales experience have a little fear and anxiety about picking it up because of like, they, haven't been, they haven't done it before, less experience. They haven't been trained before. They don't know necessarily what to do. They don't, they don't always know what to expect. When they do have a random, you know what they're mostly afraid of? Is like the random stupid response that says, hey, you know what, I'm gonna just be buried in a ditch. And then you're like, what the heck do I say to that, right? That, that's what people are mostly scared of. So if that's what you're, I think that's what most people are scared of. It's not that the script is perfect, but they're scared of those really random, dumb responses that we get when we call leads. So if that's what you're scared of, Write every response that you think you're gonna get 
and write a rebuttal for it. And then if you've got a script word for word, if you're prepared that no matter what they say, you've got one of these three rebuttals to grab, then it becomes easier. I mean, I was helping a new agent make calls. Uh, Lyndon, I was helping a new agent make calls on Monday night, actually, at like seven o'clock here at the office. And they were scared because when they got responses, they didn't know what to say. Now, the agree, answer, and ask with a script and like a specific rebuttal to say, hey, I'm not interested. Perfect, I understand that. It's just my job to get you the information. It's up to you with whatever you wanna do with it. I'll be out in your area on Friday. Should I drop it off in the morning or in the afternoon? Right, if that's, that's what's funny is, if you have something to grab and it's on paper and they can say this and you can say this, it becomes easier, doesn't it? So think through that, role play it, script it out, be prepared, right? Prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. That's what somebody else said at a training one time. And then it becomes easier. So I hope that helps. Both people are scared. They're not scared of calling and reading the script. They're scared of what the prospect's gonna say on the other end of the phone. No matter what they say, there's something you can say. Any other questions? Yeah, Omar Rodriguez. Omar Rodriguez. Um, he asked, Cody, what advice would you have for a part-time agent? Cody, what advice would you, would you have for a part-time agent as far as activity, right? Activity schedule. Activity schedule, yeah, okay. I was part-time. The number one excuse insurance agents make is I don't have enough time, right? I made 117K at 19 and I was in college taking 21 credit hours a semester and playing basketball and still freaking crushed it. Your goal should be even part-time. I'm going to lower the bar just because. Should be to set 10 appointments every week and sit with six. So, or sell a phone, whatever. But you can pick 10 blank hours, 12 blank hours, whatever it is, throughout your entire week, whether it be mornings, evenings, weekends, Sundays, Saturday mornings, you can, Friday afternoons, even part-time, you can find 10 open hours to put appointments into. So that's my recommendation, two things. Number one, you need designated dial times. And to book 10 appointments, you're gonna need at least two hours, probably about two separate one hour sessions to where you can plug into leads. So three steps, part-time agent, and you can use this for a video later, Dylan. Three steps for helping a part-time agent make six, even, even uh, 60K at least, right? As possible. Step number one, you need leads to call every week in a steady flow of leads. Boom, you can do that, right? Yes. Right, Omar? Step number two, you need two separate one hour dial times every week. It can be Saturday morning and Monday night. I don't care what it is. You need two separate one hour dial sessions, total of two hours. You set an appointment every 15 minutes. Then guess what? You just booked eight in that example, okay? And you wanna end up sitting with six. So if you gotta book 10, then call for three hours a week. Leads, specific dial times. And the third thing is windows for when you can book appointments. If you work Monday through Thursday from nine to six, then you can run appointments Friday at, let's just say, let's just say your dial time is Friday morning from eight to 10. Then you can run appointments from at 11, 12.30, two, 3.30, five, there's five appointments. You just need five other set times. You can also do the same thing on Friday or on Saturday, and you could book a couple times on Sunday. So those are the three things. Leads, steady flow, minimum 20, okay? Two, two to three hours of structured specific dial times. And three, you need specific, I don't, and you, can, you, you don't have to do 90 minute, not 90 minute appointment times. You can do an hour, you can do 75 minutes. And then you need about eight to 10 open available appointment times that you fill up every week, okay? And, and you can do that. And then guess what? You do that, I don't care what product you're selling, you're earning 60K part-time, which is probably more than you're working full-time. Am I right? Okay, there, there, there's the long, deliberate response. Thank you for the question, buddy. That's a good one. Any other thoughts or questions? Yeah, Clayton Wood. Clayton Wood. 
said, good stuff, Cody. I sell group benefits, but I've been thinking about selling Medicare supplements. After, good stuff, Cody. Business hours. Good stuff, Cody. I sell group insurance, but I'm thinking about selling Medicare supplements. Um, his question is, how much after business hours? How much servicing the client goes into MedSup? How much servicing the client goes into MedSup? Only two things. I would say there's three things that most Medicare supplements do, and you can do this in another video, Dylan. Three things that most Medicare supplement agents do to service a client, okay? They, if, if, if the client reaches out to you with like a claim help, doesn't happen much, maybe once a year, okay? But if, I mean, MedSup, it's pretty easy. Medicare, MedSup, it pays for the remainder. It supplements Medicare, picks up the other 20%. You have a 100% comprehensive plan and it covers it, right? If, if you get an inbound request, then that's, that's, a, that's something you gotta help. You should also send out um, a letter while shopping their plan, okay? Once a year, around their anniversary date. You should shop and let them know that you're doing it. I don't care whether you do it through letter, text, call, whatever, okay? Maybe an inbound request. You should shop it once a year and check on them. Let them know you're checking on them. And then you should send them like a birthday card, you know, or maybe a Christmas card. Maybe the birthday card. Most birthday cards typically say, hey, thanks for doing business with me, right? That's stupid. Don't say that. You, should, you could say, Betty, you were born, ha happy birthday. You were born in 1945. Back in 1945, you were able to get a can of Coke for 50 cents. Now it costs a do dollar. So here's a dollar and put it in the envelope with a card. Here's a dollar, have a Coke on me. Happy birthday from your favorite Medicare agent, Cody, right? Or whatever. Those are, th th those are a few ideas. Be unique, stand out. Those are, th those are the kind of the three things to think through when servicing a Medicare supplement client. Let's hope that helps. That's a good question, man. That's a really good question. There's, there's you a couple separate single videos, Dylan. He loves pulling videos out of, out of shows. Uh, that's all the questions. Cool, that's all the questions. I love, I love being on 8% Club. We've been going for 20 minutes. You guys are amazing. The stat should not scare you. Freaking have some heart, some determination. Get serious, think bigger. Realize you wanna stop playing life small and go attack at 8% and freaking succeed. Thanks for watching, have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Hey, if you love this video and maybe you wanna gain clients from home in your freaking pajamas, then you'll love this video. Top ways to sell life insurance 100% from home. Click on it and I'll see you there. Was it, was it just the guy said, I don't want you to come to my house and you sold it and you're like, maybe I can do this again. That's exactly it. I just didn't like it. And so once I just, you know, once that happened, I was like, see ya, I'm done. Like I left.